Hello boys and girls. Today we are going to talk about heighting algebras. Okay, and I say upfront, I don't know how you pronounce uh, hating or heighting. I will say heighting with my accent here. Um, you can uh, read this first paragraph of the Wikipedia page if you want to get a feel for it, although I will not refer back to it after that. Um, we are getting at this topic, uh, of course, from a sort of logic angle. The heading algebras provide semantics for intuitionistic logics. Uh, and I'm motivated um, by this short video series that I do at the moment on topos theory, right? So uh, here I've listed some of the main examples of where you find uh, heading algebras in nature. So uh, in particular, like everything Boolean algebra can be seen as a special case of a heading algebra. And also the operations on, on so topolog topological space, right? There, there are, um, you can speak about um, inclusions and, and uh, complements on the set and, and these sort of things and intersections and unions of topological spaces. Um, and if you set up the right definitions, um, you can read a uh, heading algebra into that as well and then work from that. Um, but uh, as I just said, I'm uh, motivated by the topos um, case where the, the errors from the terminal object to the sub-object classifier object, you know, this is the sub-object classifier here. Um, like among these errors, there's the sub-object classifier. And this set that we have here um, actually forms a heighting algebra. Um, and from that perspective, the whole thing is a generalization of this sort of Boolean uh, true-false truth-value conceptual conceptuation. And uh, so, in this video, uh, we talk about um, logic, and the gain, sort of, by looking at that for us here is to have a much better understanding of, uh, like, what logic and in particular negation for example in intuitionistic logics can be right you can read into intuitionistic logics as uh, a more proof focused logic so instead of uh, speaking of true and false we might speak of uh, provable or not provable and uh, what does it mean for uh, you know the the plentora of interpretations uh, that the that this uh, sort of stepping away from this binary true false uh what can give us that and if you have this this picture in mind of uh of, of this grid of a heading algebra then uh, it's a little bit more clear uh, what can happen and why um okay so uh like up front so this is a uh, um just from a wikipedia page on monotone uh, boolean functions but it uh, highly relates to what we're going to to uh, to do or, or like the the primary example that we're going to um, look at so uh, as you can see here this is the basically everything you can get uh, if you take the end operation and the or operation and uh, various numbers of atoms let's say atom propositions so if um, uh, let's let's go at it like that. Um, if you say, um, okay, I'm, I'm only going to look at the trivial propositions, the four pro false proposition and true one, then this corresponds here to to uh, bottom the zero. This is like the this is just the plain trivial false, and this is the the plain trivial true. And uh, then uh, you have some proposition um, x in this case. Um, the, usually I would write P um, for propositions or Q or something like that, but since the, this, the truth value um, uh, like collection that we are going to map into has then this algebraic structure, you find these letters X and that's what I also use in my uh, text that we are going to go through later. So uh, think of any um, proposition here, this X represents some proposition and this can take uh, it could take the, the false value, you know, we, we would say uh, like in a classical like conception, 
this x is either going to be mapped to, to uh, zero or the bottom or, or to the top. Okay, and um, then the, the next picture is then re more relevant. Let's say you have two, these two uh, atomic uh, propositions and um, you also allow yourself to use these connectives and or or uh, and or or and um, what you then get is a sort of uh, probability hierarchy, right? So, for example, the uh, conjunction and um, if you uh, remember from the video I did on axioms of mathematics um, is basically always uh, defined in a way that if you have a proof of a and B, then you can project out uh, proofs of A or proofs of B, right? The statement A or B, if you know that this is true, then this is uh, stronger. This is in general more information than just having A or um, or B, right? And so these, these lines that go upwards are basically, I mean, we are going to get a little bit more into the, the details how we should read that. Right? This is sort of an informal uh, introduction to starting to think in terms of this, this lattice of propositions. But uh, you can, you can uh, relate the, these uh, lines that go up, upwards here to the, the statement that this um, x and y is a stronger statement. It implies these. And um, similarly, uh, if you have uh, y, if you have the statement y, for example, proven, then um, it's in, in uh, virtually all uh, logics that are sensible, uh, you, like apart from some su substructural logics maybe, <laughs> or linear logics, uh, where uh, this is more strict. But uh, okay, in general, in any case, in, in this video here, uh, you have the situation that if you have uh, y proven, then uh, you also have a proof of x or y, right? Because x or y is just a weaker statement. If I just give you uh, x or y, then you might a priori not know what it is, uh, particularly in classical logic, you don't. Um, and so in this way, there is also the same upwards relation, right? This, this way, uh, statement is weaker. And um, this, this flow upwards, actually also works for the bottom and the top element. Because if you accept explosion, if you say that from uh, bottom, from absurdum, follows everything, then indeed uh, y, like uh, bottom, implies everything, right? So for example, uh, you say false implies y, then you ha also have this kind of up direction there. So the, the thing that this is at the, at the bottom of this, of this picture is the strongest in the sense that by the deduction rules of our logics, this imply things upward. So um, as you then can see here, the or and and um, and uh, make for a meet and join operation on a lattice. This is, I mean, uh, if you, for example, if you consider the, the sort of free algebra with these two operations, then you can f start forming this these expressions, right? Um, you get this algebra um, of objects where you, if you have some object uh, x and y, then you can form x or y, for example. And you can also go on, you can take uh, x or y and, and uh, do it together with um, or y, so bracket, x or y, bracket, or y. Um, but that, uh, by the deduction rules of your logic, is the same as just saying x or y, right? Because doing, you know, y or y is the same as y. So this thing is all already there. Um, and similarly for all the other relations there. Okay, and, and here you see um, that I can, sadly, I cannot move this any better than here. I can move myself. Opa, no. Maybe unplug. Okay, so then I can move this, but then you will see my, this is my recording tool. <laughs> okay, but nonetheless, I, I just wanted to show you here the full picture. Um, so this is the same situation, but with uh, free, this is a, like uh, like basically the freely generated um, lattice with three objects, X, Y, and Z. The strongest one is uh, okay. The strongest one is is like absurdum. If you have absurdum, then you you are super strong because you can suddenly prove everything in your theory. So 
at least with explosion. Uh, but then the next be best thing <laughs> that you can get is that you know that all three are true. Um, so then you know everything is true, maybe except that. Um, and from this, for example, it follows that if x, y, and z is true, then x and y is also true, right? You have this upwards floor, flow. And uh, But then um, since you have three things, you can also then say, no, I know that x and y, uh, and y is true or x and uh, z is true. And then if you have more, you know, uh, loss of uh, distrib distrib distributivity, yeah, this, if, if the, the lattice is distributive, then you can rewrite it maybe, but you, maybe you'll find yourself somewhere else. Um, majority, this is just a name for a Boolean operation. There was a video that I, where I, I for before uh, like, I don't know, one or two years or so, I implemented some of these things in Python. I also did this Boolean operation. And I, re uh, I like recall, we are still like, this is just the intuition uh, for like thinking in terms of this lattice. This is, uh, not uh, like from this from Wikipedia, but it's not from the Heiting algebra page. This is just to motivate how you we're going to line up um, propositions and and think about them. Um, and yeah, okay. So uh, let's dwell on it uh, not any longer. Let me move everything back in place here. Ah, oh, yes, it's not. Okay. Um, but I will leave this open. So, uh, as you note, this uh, the whole thing uh, will uh, relate to logics that are weaker than just classical logic, of course. This is our motivation to introduce this, this uh, more generalized semantics. Uh, in, the, in that way, it relates to um, a more uh, wider... Um, range of logics. I did this this uh, video on non-classical logics where I like tried to go over uh, like several of them including modal logics and this sort of kind and that way this relates um, to some uh, past videos and then uh, what we will also see is since we're going to talk about negation a lot um, let me just check something okay 12 minutes um, since we um going to talk about negation i have this video that like this is like you know there's the common misconception of, of how strong or what what strong means for intuitionistic logics for example so there's this video where i prove making use of uh, lambda calculus mostly um the law of excluded middle in a rewritten form basically i i prove non-contradiction which classically is equivalent to Law of excluded middle. So if you're interested in motivations for the strength of these sort of theories that we talk about, uh, recommend this. And then finally, uh, apart from the Topos videos, um, the video where I talk about uh, the axioms. Um, I will also use a tiny bit, a little bit of uh, lambda calculus just for, because it's the most efficient way to write down proofs, um, in my opinion. Um, Okay, so there is a Wikipedia page on intermediate logic, as it says here, in mathematical logic. Uh, super intuitionistic logic is uh, propositional logic extending intuitionistic logic. Classical logic and the strongest consistent super intuitionistic logics. Um, thus, classical logic is the strongest uh, consistent super intuitionistic logic. Thus, uh, consistent super intuitionistic okay i'm not going to say this word anymore logics are called intermediate logic so basically this is are the the logics uh between like classical logics logic and taking classical logic and just removing in the standard axiomatization and removing law fix to the middle that would be into intuitionistic logic but then you can actually add axioms in between that don't uh, then with your calculus of, of um proof calculus imply a law fix to the middle and, and and this is why then there is actually like in between logics and i say it because uh in uh, the heighting semantics context where we might have many many true values we can search like for models on various stages on the grid uh, okay we will get to that uh, later so here is a nice list of of various like statements that make for intermediate logics that you can join. IPC is uh, the weakest framework that's our base framework in this video. 
Um, and, and here's the, the relevant uh, claim here. Giving a uh, Heiting algebra H the set of propositional formulas, by the way, here, like I, I talk about closed uh, propositions, and if I say IPC, then this is propositional calculus and not necessarily quantify and fancy, fancy things. But okay, um, given a Heiting algebra, Heiting algebra, <laughs> uh, the set of propositional formulas that are valid in H is an intermediate logic. Conversely, this is the more important like perspective for this video. Conversely, given an intermediate logic, it is possible to construct its Lindenbaum algebra, which is a Heiting algebra. Um, and a Lindenbaum algebra, uh, I have to do the article here as well to see how all these things com come together. A mathematical logic, the Lindenbaum Tusky algebra or a Lindenbaum algebra of a logical theory. So we have a theory T. By, by theory, I mean basically we have. Um, set of axioms and uh, the proof calculus that comes with it consists of equivalence classes of sentences of the theory, i.e. Uh, the quotient of uh, under the equivalence relation defined uh, such that two P and Q statements are uh, uh, equivalent uh, when P and Q, uh, Q are provably equivalent in this theory. Um, Full stop. Okay, so uh, you have a theory. There are a bunch of well formed formulas that you can write down, some of which you can prove. Maybe there are some that you can uh, not prove, um, but you know, you can still make statements about them. You say, if that statement, which I cannot prove, were true, then I can, then you can try what, what else can you prove from it. For example, you can take. Um, some set theory without choice, and then you say, if I adopt choice, then this implies also these other statements that I cannot prove without, without like assuming any more axioms. And uh, so, given a, th a theory, um, you get these these things, these these theorems with respect to, to this theory at least are somehow connected, right? With respect to your proof calculus, um, you suddenly uh, can make connection between theorems whether or not you. you have them as axioms or, or, or not okay so this is the setting and, and as you can now like already like guess um, we have some some theory we have some things that we can prove this is ba basically then uh, all true in a way that we can map everything of that to to the top this is all like one uh, or all more or less um, don't want to say uninteresting but this is like all s s naturally squashed to what is true and then uh, you have um, a bunch of things that you uh, you that are okay. You have some things that are like false, right? You can say, uh, "Oh, uh, free is not free." That will like naturally be mapped to the bottom, and then you might have in between uh, statements that you cannot prove. You cannot prove false, you, but you can, for example, consistently add as an axiom, and then they hover somewhere in between. It's not like you can prove them. It's not like you can reject them. Indeed, you, you, they cannot be rejected if otherwise they are, we are already at the bottom. But they, they, they are like, they are like barely, ba barely, barely or closely true. In, if you want, if you want, then they are true. Let's say you can can adopt them as an axiom, and um, so in your mind you sort them into the middle somewhere, right? And this is how this, this structure then uh, comes into play. Okay. Uh, Again, this is like sort of an informal like introduction to this topic, and I'm not go going to do much algebra in particular here, but this is like to get a feel for this semantics. Um, okay, I don't think we'll need that anymore. Um, uh, the intermediate logics I will also not need anymore. Uh, I already advertised the channel. Please subscribe uh, to this channel, of course, as always, and and I don't know, click the bell icon. Um, and uh, so, just as, as an aside, like to get some context in um, as a lattice, you know, the, you, you have some ax axioms that we will um, like quickly uh, look at for the Heiting algebra, and then you have some context uh, inside of lattice theory where Heiting algebras fit into. And here you have one of the pictures. This is from from Wikipedia, where you see uh, oh. Um, Every Boolean algebra is a Heiting algebra. Every Heiting algebra is, will turn out is a distributive lattice. So this says something about how you can rewrite the meet and joins or in our interpretation end and or. And then 
some other, you know, it's 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 going to be a bounded lattice. This is a, something that, ha that has uh, it's a lattice. It's a semi lattice uh, and partially ordered set, uh, but not not every heighting algebra is an I don't know auto complemented lattice and so on. Okay, so this is like for, just for context, so you can see where it is. Um, e yeah, okay, and and then also um, there's. Just googling nice pictures to, to make the side notes. There, I found this website. Um, shout out to V Vendor Build, um, uh, who has this picture here also. To, this is a similar like information where you find hiding uh, algebras here, and uh, it's a little bit more refined. It says um, that they are also semi-infinitely distributive lattices. Distributive lattices. So this is like the same thing, but. but but uh, the weaker thing is on top. <laughs> okay, but uh, of course, uh, this, this this is just structures to visualize information about heighting algebras, right? Don't confuse these graphs with heighting algebras themselves. Um, okay, and uh, then you might have seen this this picture. I cannot zoom in more than, than it is here, but uh, this uh, is a lattice that has informational informational content. This has information about hiding algebras uh, themselves. Namely, what you see here is the freely generated, um, this sort of relation that I just talked about with, with bottom at the, uh, at the bottom. <laughs> and, uh, and then everything that is like buildable from negation, implication and uh, disjunction or, um, and then you see here also these, these sort of relations. Um, how the negations relate to other statements will become uh, clear um, in 15 minutes or so, uh, and we might come back to to that. But there, I, I guess you can you can see right. This is like a similar sort of relation. So if you know that uh, bottom is true, like if your theory is inconsistent, then you can prove everything. You, you can you start there, and if you know p, then you also like in into in, in intuitionistic logic. Then this implies that not not p. If you have not not p, then this implies not not p or something else, and this is the way it goes. And uh, this is like this, this uh, infinitely high uh, chain of freely, um, freely, um, yeah, this, this, this freely generated lattice, and then you have this, this sort of uh, two anti chains uh, that uh, sort of characterize. Um, these levels of strength. Okay. okay, let's leave that open for safety sake. Uh, okay, so after that, I know I'm already 20 minutes in, but I hope the intuition is there. So what I have uh, written down, I when I like scripted this uh, video, I actually didn't think uh, to spend too much time of the, on these pictures. But the good thing is I explained already a lot of, of now notions intuitively that we're um, going to mention. So I have here a bunch of like common language statements. And um, what I want you to do is like read through them. Wait a minute. Refresh this. Uh, read through them and, um, and, and like think about uh, like what, what are some, some uh, truth values who would assign to them or what would it actually mean? So here I sort of step away for a little bit from the math and, and, and step into logic proper as it would be like dealt with in the philosophy department. I take a common language sentence and think about what does it actually mean to assign a truth value to this sort of statement. So we have here some, some simple statements like uh, Nikolai has a YouTube channel. Uh, you know, this is true, <laughs> obviously. Um, and I know statistical mechanics. Spoiler alert, that's also true. <laughs> um, and but then then I, I also added uh, like some uh, like a little bit more uh, like dangerous statements here, like stuff about the future. See, Nikolai will marry a woman named Lara. Um, and things that that you will not be able to verify or not here. Uh, Nikolai dreamed of a pony last night. Right, and I, I want to like motivate a little bit the distinction of, of is true, is provable. There, there's evidence for, ends for that. There, there's a witness. Um, then uh, some more normative statements. Uh, Nikolai belongs in a grave. Um, 
or uh, these statements uh, like have uh, brown eyes, green eyes, or some implications here, right? Um, if Nikolai has green eyes, sorry for the typo there, um, then he will marry a woman. So here, like, I, I want to make, the, mo want to motivate that this sort of notion of atomic sentence, right? Uh, this this uh, Lara sentence is already there, and uh, the, the green eyes sentence is also there. But now we can like from this implication, and this is then also a sentence of its own, but it's sort of composite with this uh, binary binary operation of implication, if we want. And the I do the same thing with and and so. Um, or the, the, I also think I have the negation negation sentences somewhere. So here um, has blue eyes, has not blue eyes. Okay. So I, like what I want for you is like to read these sentences and kind of imagine this this tree in in this fashion and and where to sort uh, these statements into, and then also think about maybe possible equivalences or, or relations, like the fact that you know if I have implications, then this implication statement is. A proposition on its own but it's also states something about how this relate these things relate right so for example um we might have that that x implies the statement x or y and y, x or z but the statement x implies da, 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 is itself also a statement like if we f are free to generate this with this implication is itself a statement somewhere in the grid right so as you see here, this is this sort of Boolean consideration from this from this uh, monotone Boolean function uh, page, um, and we, here we have only disjunction, conjunction, and no no implication yet. And the Boolean, uh, the hating algebra, hating algebra is exactly what like is taking this sort of idea and then also adding a third operation and having some consistency relations um, or some axioms with it. Okay, so that said. Uh, let's um, let's go further and this is basically what we have already covered okay we consider a bounded lattice so we have this top and bottom elements and we have uh, some uh, algebraic um, operations meet and join I'm not going to go into much detail because uh, like in we have to definitely the intuitive idea right we can take elements and put them somehow together and from uh, our experience uh, with this sort of mathematical tools you know what's going on um this is like this just an algebra of this syntactic expressions there if you will represent some propositions um yeah and uh i have not mentioned it explicitly yet but but uh, this upper and lower relation in a lattice of course um has this axiomatization in terms of uh, smaller than equal uh like less equal um symbol so in in that way zero is less than one and uh, zero is less equal than y and y is less equal than um, one, uh, one and um, we, if you like for example if we go here and and shrink them together so for example if I say oh uh, this is generically x is something uh, different than zero and y but now I say okay let y uh, like let, let sorry X is different from zero and one, but now let, let's say I say X equals uh, one, right? Then these two that um, are a priori like uh, sep separate from each other um, are in fact the same thing by, by my axiom, and then they, they are kind of mapped, they are kind of squeezed into that, right? There is there is this way of uh, like going in this in this direction, right? I can I can identify elements here and uh, Map them into here. For example, so here I have um, x or y. Let's let me like add the axiom. Hey, actually x should be one, um, and let's say y is zero. Then um, this becomes zero. So this is actually the same thing, and everything works out fine because uh, zero and uh, and one. Like two and false is false so this actually becomes all false and this becomes one so this becomes true and true or false is also true so suddenly this upper part of three elements becomes true and this becomes false so this kind of squeezes into into that direction you see how that like 
logically like this this uh this uh the order structure this partial order in the lattice um like makes sense with this logical um, readings of the meet and join um okay um okay I, I talked about at length about like weak and strong interpretation of this this uh these elements okay yeah Yeah, and uh, and as I said, so if um, basically uh, if you say we we proven something, then like uh, like we unconditionally proven something, like say here we have this upper block and we proven a bunch of things, then these uh, are all like mapped, like we then they are they can all be mapped uh, into one uh, in this consistent way, right? I'm still very informal here, but. But you see where this get we're getting here, right? In a in a in a way, if I postulate the theory, then and say, oh, let's consider all the the the, the propositions that are true, provable. Then let me generate all the, the syntactic strings, uh, order them by uh, the like deduction, um, like uh, calculus that I have, and then. But the axioms, the theory itself, like that the mind sort of slice where I say, or oh, everything, uh, like it might be not the, the cleanest linear slice, but basically like uh, there's a lot of things that are like true pr provable and they are all like shoved to the top, right? So there's this, there's this one, the one is really like, the, the one corresponds to what's provable and the rest is like provably false. Um, and we're going to talk about this interaction between the top and the bottom in a second. Obviously, it's going to relate to negation. Um, and then maybe something unprovable in the middle. Um, okay, and of course, if, if like zero is one, if the, my theory is consistent, if true is false, then everything's squashed to just a point. Which uh, the Heiting algebra is not. So the Heiting algebra is not going to be um, inconsistent, i.e. it's going to be have at least two elements. Um, okay, I talked about this natural squashing, and uh, as a side note, it, uh, you can also like read the the algebra as a category, and then a bunch of operations uh, have like uh, some natural uh, translations to in category theoretical notions. You know, um, we already talked about the language of of limits and co-limits and joints in category theory will smell a lot like the notions that we talk about here. Um, meet and joints and so on um, and exponential objects and uh, so then in category theory like this also relates into pre sheaves and so I, I, I see naturally and it, it has uh, like a this colorful language has some truth uh, behind it as well Okay, so um, we already like talk about the like I already even gave you the the Wikipedia definition of the Lindenbaum algebra, which is not just looking at the, the syntactic expressions, but taking all these that they are equivalent to each other with respect to the truth calculus, squashing them to a point that that's going to be the main model of the Heiting algebras. Um, we can actually think of Heiting algebras as these sort of structures induced in this way. Um, yeah okay and uh this being bounded so zero being bottom and one being top means like if you even if you draw uh, everything out and and uh, um like everything that's trivial uh it's all it's, it's not that it cannot be above one right one, one is really the top okay it's also it kind of goes without saying um okay and now <laughs> now we actually get to hiding algebras like proper so these are uh, lattices in the way we talked about and such that modus ponens right this is like a, a, a rule that you can formulate externally with the proof calculus or internally with just implication symbol um, that is uh, this 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 uh, implication statements they are like internalized in the in the lattice ie we have this Error, which we read as a binary operation, right? You take two elements of um, the the lattice and draw this, and this is then also another element um, 
uh, and uh, the um, that makes just for a, fun for a function on this lattice, right? And that's the way it's a binary operation. Um, and it it has this relation. So x is smaller than y, exactly if this statement uh, corresponds to the top, right? So we take something like that, and we say, for example, here x implies x or y. So we form x implies y as a statement in the lattice. But this is then... Uh, already like this this implication sorry is a little bit confusing that here's x and y and i use the same letters of course but uh, let's say let's say um p equals x and q equals x or y then i can form the statement p implies q right this is just the statement x implies uh, x or uh, y which happens to be true by the definition of or and um, a heighting algebra is then a structure which has this sort of binary op operation such that this statement, if, if the relation was like that, then this is actually at the top already, right? And uh, like in, in more glory, we have then the full set of axioms, which is not too long on the Wikipedia page. So it says here, this is like, there's a section with various atoms, uh, axioms because they have the category theoretical definition. And then they have the relation to in intuitionistic logic, but then they have also the straight, the short uh, lattice uh, definition. And so it says that given a boundless, bounded lattice A with largest and smallest element one and zero and the binary operation, uh, these together form a heighting algebra if and only if these four axioms hold. And they're all like from a logical perspective, all like super like evident. So uh, A implies A, so it should be uh, true. And, and that means like a, I say implies, and I use already the logic language, which kind of uh, like makes everything then trivial because like I impose already the interpretation. But but you can view this also kind of lattice theoretically and algebraically um, on itself. But here, so it says a implies a um, is uh, one. So this is logical perspective, self-evident. But here it means that this this element is mapped by this binary operation uh, to uh, the top, then um, A and A implies B uh, is the same or is it the same level if you think about the elements of the uh, equivalence class in the Lindenbaum algebra, uh, then A uh, and B. And uh, this is logically also clear, right? Uh, if you have A, then later you also have A. So this is clear, this A implies A, this is clear. And also if you have that A implies uh, B, then with modus ponens, this implies B. So this direction is also clear. And the other direction is also simple by the fact that if you have proven B, then you can also for every proposition prove that this proposition implies this true proposition. Uh, okay, the similar... Uh, Thing applies here it's basically actually the same same issue so if you have b then you have b sure and if you have b then this statement doesn't give you much more right so this characterizes now which binary operations actually um, we want to look at those which have this kind of logical sensible reading um, and then also this distributive law so if a implies b and c then it's the same information as saying A implies B and also independently A implies C and the other way around. Okay, and so this is the definition. You, you have uh, here another axiomatization if you want to uh, look at uh, this um, because in the, in the rest, I would say in the rest of the video we are going to talk about negation, but since we are already um, uh, 40 minutes in and people I don't want to spoil you here. <laughs> and uh, people complain always that I make too long videos. I uh, will leave it at that. Um, I hope this was informative. Subscribe to this channel. Um, leave questions and maybe if direction in which you want to this video to go. And I'm looking forward to a second video unplanned on uh, hiding algebras. And I will stop this here. Take care.